Hello again, it's Laura Davalo here with another interactive card tutorial. This time I've used products mainly from the amazing March card kit to create a double slider card. When we pull the slider panel, a hidden word is revealed to complete the sentiment. I chose letters from the Impact Alphabet Dynamics, which are one and three quarters of an inch tall. You don't need these exact dies to create this card, but I recommend that they are at least an inch in height. Here I'm adhering them to a piece of Eiffel Tower Prestige cardstock with strips of tape to do some partial die cutting. The second O is actually a zero from the Impact Number Dynamics. If you choose a word with repeated letters, you can just die cut them normally and adhere them one by one to the cellophane strip later on. However, to me it's easier to align them this way. As you can see, I'm placing the upper cutting plate about one eighth of an inch from the edge of the dies. That way they won't be completely cut and will hang together. Next I'll grab a craft knife to do a straight cut in between the letters and then I'll do a second one about a quarter of an inch from the first one. I don't have a lot of space to completely hide the letters in my horizontal A2 panel so I'll hide the parts that show with die cut images. I also cut the letters out of a beautiful piece of paper from the new wallpaper patterns pad backed with sticky adhesive and now I'll carefully adhere them to my partially die cut sentiment. Now I can trim that excess piece with my scissors and move on to the main panel. I've already die cut it with the largest die from the A2 stitched rectangle stack set 1 dynamics out of Eiffel Tower cardstock covered with another piece of wallpaper. It measures 5 and 3 eighths of an inches by 4 and 1 eighth. The strip of butterscotch cardstock, which will be the floor, is also 5 and 3 eighths of an inches wide by 2 and 1 eighth of an inches tall. I'm just eyeballing everything and adapting the available space to my elements, but I'll show you all of the measurements in a moment if you want to recreate this exact card. I already drew a line 5 16 of an inches from the right edge of the panel, and now I'm drawing a line 3 16 of an inches from the lower edge. The third line is parallel to it and there's a distance of 1 and 13 sixteenths of an inches between them. Now I'm using a craft knife to cut the two parallel slits for the cellophane strip. It's also a good idea to widen the slits just a smidge since this cardstock is quite heavyweight and is covered with a sheet of paper as well. Ok, so here are the measurements of the main panel. I'll give you a couple of seconds to check them out and to do a screen capture if you want to. Ok, let's move on to inserting the strip of cellophane. I adhered one eighth of an inch wide score tape to one edge of the cellophane and now I'm inserting it through the upper slit with the sticky side up. It goes out through the lower slit and now we can get rid of the backing paper and adhere it. There we go. Let's carefully trim off the excess with a pair of scissors. I also added a strip of score tape to the lower edge of my die cut word and now I can adhere it to the cellophane. I'm going slowly and carefully to get it as straight as possible. Luckily the cellophane is quite forgiving and we can redo it. Let's see how much of the word is showing above the floor panel. And now let's scroll it upwards and see what it will look like pulled out. Ok, I'm happy with that. Let's move on. Off camera I added a strip of score tape to the back of the cellophane. I also cut the white slider panel and stamped the word pull from the interactive label set in the center of the lower edge. The panel measures 4 and 7 eighths of an inches by 3 and 3 quarters. 
I'd drawn a pencil mark on the back of the main panel to know where to adhere the slider panel. And here we go. When we don't have a lot of room for foam tape and we don't really need a lot of volume, I prefer to use strips of cardstock with double-sided tape on each side. These are a quarter of an inch and half an inch wide. Thanks to them the slider panel will move perfectly straight. They will also allow us to adhere the panel to the card base. And next I'm going to do just that. So I'm temporarily adhering the slider panel to the main panel so that it doesn't move. My card base of smooth white cardstock measures 5 and 5 eighths of an inches by 8 and 3 quarters. Okay, before we move on, let's test the mechanism. It works perfectly, so now we just need to add foam tape to the main panel so that we can adhere the strip of floor to it. After that, we're ready to decorate the card, and that's about it. I have a bunch of leftover die cuts from recent projects, so I'll just use those. They're made with the cat and plant purchase dynamics and the house cats stamps and dies. As always, you'll find a list of the Copic markers that I used in the description box below. Here's a final look at the finished card. Thank you so very much for watching till the end. Stay safe and until next time. Bye bye. Hasta la próxima.